situation where the man can learn the possible hijack. Ready, Captain? Are you there? Ready? Ready? United 175, New York. We have some problems over here right now. We might have a hijack over here, two of them. It was a typical day at the United States Military Academy at West Point. I was the operations officer for the Corps of Cadets. And I was on my way to a meeting one morning and I walked by all the offices and my security officer said, hey, sir, take a look at this. And he said, a small plane just crashed in the World Trade Center. As Matt just mentioned, we have a breaking news story to tell you about. Apparently, a plane has just crashed into the World Trade Center here in New York a City. A remarkable and scene as we're On my way to the office, I remember just thinking that how did a small plane end up crashing into the World Trade Center? Uh, I thought tourism, small plane just got lost and crashed into the building. As I was in the briefing, talking to this general officer, that same security officer came in and amongst the general officer, the colonels, and all the other senior officers said, sir, we're under attack. So you have no idea right, right oh, now? Oh, there's another one. Another plane just hit. <gasps> right? Oh, oh my God. Oh. Another plane. And we immediately broke the meeting out, went to take a look. And I went back to my security officer's terminal and watched as this unfolded. My God. I remember vividly standing there watching. And I said, why is the camera panning up? What it was is the World Trade Center, the first one going down. And I couldn't believe what I was seeing. The building has collapsed. That tower just came down. And as army officers and other military leaders, we were anxious to do something. He said, it's my job. And they may be, there may be some of my brother officers in there. There may be other people in there. There were plenty of first responders in New York City and all the support that they could possibly handle. The outpouring, wanting to give everything we could. I think they took collections of socks and things that we could offer our first responders to help. We all woke up the next morning wishing that it never happened, that as if it were some bad dream. What I didn't know then was that it would change the course of my life, that as a result of that attack, I would spend three of the next six years deployed to combat in Iraq that I would spend that much time in combat and see uh, the loss of life, the sacrifice that not only our first responders on 9-11, but all our service members that gave their lives as well in combat in Iraq and Afghanistan. America today is on bended knee. There are certain memories that you have from the time period then, and one is to be able to watch and listen uh, to President Bush speak to all the first responders on the ground. All those who, who acted in response, volunteers, first responders, who are listening to our president speak, not only to heal them, but to heal our country. And the people who knock these buildings down will hear all of us soon. I'm grateful to have had the opportunity to serve this wonderful country for 24 years of military service. I too wish that that day had never occurred. But the energy I devote is to those who have given their lives on that day and those who gave their lives after in service. And that's where I find my energy. That's where I find my energy now uh, to serve then and to serve this wonderful agency as well, the Texas Department of Criminal Justice.